I'm Tony from Bonner's Music in Eastbourne, where you can see over 70 digital pianos under one roof and compare all the major brands next to each other. Um, and with me today, I've got Chris from Casio Musical Instruments. Hi, Tony. Hi. Um, and Chris is going to give us a bit more in-depth information about the new Grand Hybrid series from Casio. Uh, there's the GP300 that I'm sitting in front of and the flagship GP500. Uh, which Chris is in front of there. Um, and there are some differences between the pianos, more than just the, the colour of the cabinets, which, uh, which we'll come to a little bit later. Um, but first of all, I think Chris is going to um, explain a bit more about the key feature of the Grand Hybrid pianos, uh, which is actually the keyboard action, which we've got a model of it here to, uh, to show you. Um, so, Chris, tell me about Grand Hybrid. Okay, well, it's a really exciting thing for Casio and actually for the whole sort of world of digital pianos, really, because this is the first time when two different companies have got together. So Casio pretty much did all the electronics and the sound design behind it, but this key action here really is based upon a lot of work that Casio did with uh, a very famous brand of acoustic um, ma piano manufacturer called Beckstein. Um, now Beckstein have been around for over 150 years in actual fact. Yes. And uh, when they started this project, um, Casio said to Beckstein, how do we make the best feel grand piano, how the, the best feel digital piano? Yep. How can you do it? Uh, and Beckstein said, well actually there, there isn't any, you know, clever way of doing it you've got to put the real thing in the digital piano so that's really okay. what this is and it, what makes this action special um oh, well it's a few things actually the first thing that you can probably see you know sort of first and foremost is that the key itself this is a cutaway of just one key and the key itself is a wooden key so you can see that this is made entirely of wood now some other products yeah. say they're wooden keys in actual fact, what it turns out is that the, that the wooden key is actually a wooden insert um, that's actually been placed in plastic. So you've got right, plastic. So it's just faced with wood yeah. as opposed to being the complete wooden absolutely, key. Absolutely, absolutely. Right. So okay. this is special because it is a fully wooden key. And also, it's the, the length is exactly the same as a, as a grand piano key. And that's something else which a lot of products, other products do, yeah. um, where the key itself is not quite long enough. And that means the pivot point is in the wrong place, absolutely. doesn't it? Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. So it's all okay. down to the feel of it. Right. The other thing as well is, obviously, if I press a key here, you yep. can see that it's making lots of different things move. And um, one of the things that's that's moving here is, of course, the hammer that you can see at the top of the, of the case there. Yeah. And that is really important because when I press a key, not only do I feel the hammer move up, but also the, the reach of the hammer the motion of the hammer translates into that feel of key. So what that means really is that when I'm playing these pianos, I actually get yeah. a feel of a real grand piano. And what I've noticed over years is that piano sounds have been very good for yeah. a long, long time. Yes. Digital pianos sound great. Yeah. And, and actually, if you're, if you're uh, hearing a digital piano from a distance, you'd think it was a real piano. Yeah. But what's been missing is the feel yeah you know they, they just have never quite felt the same or giving you the same response absolutely that you get with an acoustic absolutely so, so this is you know something really special and different really that that, that no one really has, has, has done before i mean you've had products that have had wooden keys but yeah. they might not be the full length you've had products that have you know um perhaps uh, what they say is a, a hammer action yeah but it turns out when you look inside them you haven't really got that same um, physical size and weighting of the real thing. No, well, a lot of hammer actions don't. The hammers sometimes come up underneath yes, the key. Absolutely, it's kind yes. of yeah, That's right. yeah. Whereas the yeah, so this is on the end of the key where it should be on yep. uh, as a real piano would be. Yeah, right. Okay. Um, so these this particular action is used in both of these instruments, mm -hmm. isn't it? Mm -hmm. okay. So there's there's no change in the action, and we have the same action in the three hundred and the GP five hundred. And does the uh, are the keys was is this an ivory feel type um, key? It's uh, it's the same materials actually as acoustic Bext, uh, as uh, Bechstein acoustic pianos. Right. So it's the same materials that Bechstein use in their pianos. Okay. Um, so they come from the same factory, the same yeah. wood, uh, which is Austrian spruce, I think. Um, right. Okay. So exactly the same thing, and that's something else as well that's different with these. Yes. Um, a lot of other manufacturers will use substitute materials. Um, so right. if, if they make digital pianos and acoustic pianos, 
They'll yes. use different materials. But these right. ones are exactly the same. Okay. Well, I've played it myself, and it certainly feels wonderful. Do you want to, do you want to give us a, a little yeah. bit of a rundown of how this size kind of translates into the actual uh, instrument itself? Okay. So. Well, the other great thing about these is actually we've got three pianos in one, three very different piano sounds. Okay. Okay, so uh, we've named them Berlin, Hamburg, and Vienna. Right. Okay. Um, to give you a clue about where they come from, actually... Uh, the Berlin sound, I can say, is a Beckstein sample. Right. It's a Beckstein okay. You're sound. allowed to say that. I'm allowed to say that yeah. one. Okay. It's a Beckstein D282, in actual fact, which is right. the, the biggest grand piano they do. It's about £115,000 worth of, of piano. Wow. It's, it's a lot. It's a lot okay. of instrument. Um, the other two, I think they'll have to ask you, actually. I can't, we can't say on, on officially what they are. But okay. if you're very good with your piano history and you know yes. the different factories... Um, yes. that are based in Hamburg and Vienna. You can okay. probably get a, a feel for what that is. Um, so, let's start off then with the Berlin Grand. This is, again, the, the Beckstein sound. sound for classical music yes very very nice um, in the upper register and the lower register very delicate sound but then if we go on to something like the Hamburg grand piano just before you go to the Hamburg piano, yes could we just stick with the Berlin and you play something on the Berlin and yeah. then I will play the same thing on the oh Berlin, yeah just okay. to show that the, the okay. GP 500 and 300 are do have the same yeah. basic piano sound. That's so a great idea. Let's just keep it nice and basic okay. because um, I don't know that piece of music that you just <laughs> played. So how about if we just play, I'll tell you what, I'm just going to play a C octave at the bottom here. Yeah. Or, no, let's play A because it's right down the bottom so we okay. hear the bass tone. So. Okay. There we go. So identical sound, then the same at the top A, lay minor up the top there. There, so I just wanted to show really mm. that, that you're getting very good value with the GP300 because the basic piano sound is, is the same. It's the same, same keyboard same. actually, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, absolutely. right, sorry, back to no, you. No, no, no. So, yeah, okay, so that's Berlin sound, that's yes. Bechstein. Uh, the two other grand pianos, just very quickly, uh, we've got the Hamburg. do the same thing on yeah. our next piano okay so you can hear a difference so this is the Vienna Grand played that nice. a bit differently the second time around yes. but hopefully you can hear yeah. that even though it was a different performance that the, those two piano sounds were entirely different yes. and of course different again to the Beckstein so yeah. you've got three different sounds and they are different as well they're not just the same piano sample but altered electronically right okay they're um, three completely different completely recordings different of different things. pianos yes okay. absolutely absolutely yeah okay Right, so that's the three main piano sounds, which they're exactly the same on here, aren't they? Exactly so the, three, the same. Yeah, yes. so this, the two pianos share exactly the same, yes. uh, same piano sounds. Now, um, what other features are there that, that they both share? Well, uh, another feature that's, that's really unique to these is something that Casio call Hall Simulator. Right. Now, if you think about it, wouldn't it be fantastic not only to play the piano at home, but maybe on a concert hall stage, yeah. uh, in a cathedral, in a recording studio, and of course, like we are, you know, um, recording many times here, for example. Yes. Um, the sound of the room makes a huge difference, and a lot of 
like pop piano pieces now. Yes. If you think of things like um, Einaudi, for example, you know, lovely pieces to play, really expressive pieces. A lot of the character of those pieces is not just the piano sound. It's the sound in which the, the piano it's is the put. ambience. Yeah, yeah. Like, yes. that's the word I was looking right. for. Yes. Okay. Okay. So uh, in the old days, of course, yep. with reverb and pianos, you had reverb being, you know, a short amount yes. or a long amount. And yep. if it was long, it sounded like it was in a, you know, a huge, great big um, garage or something like that. It didn't really relate to any real things. Okay. So with Hall Simulator, what they've done now is they've gone out and measured real places. Right. So, for example, um, the Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris. Yes. They went and recorded uh, how sound reflects in there. Okay. okay. They put it all in the piano. So when you select, for example, French Cathedral, yeah. the piano sound sounds as it would in the Notre Dame Cathedral. Do you want to give us a little yeah, okay. demonstration so of that? That in, sounds great. In sort of real world terms, if you think of a piece of music like, um, off the top of my head, you remember this, this film theme from American Beauty, which was very, very basic. It was sort of... Yes. Yeah? Yes. Now, if I play it normally... Very, very simple. Now, let's then go into the Hall Simulator. Same piece of music, but now in the French Cathedral. Wow. Yeah? And that's a really nice quality, smooth reverb, isn't it? Really nice reverb. And the detail on that is amazing. You know, you're getting an impression of the sound bouncing off the stone walls, off the yes. you know, things like the, the, you know, all the different shapes that you'd get in the cathedral. It's what makes the character of the sound. Yeah. And uh, I mentioned, uh, you know, for example, uh, Ein Audi earlier on. So, you know, when you get things like... Uh, It's more than just a piano sound. It's, yeah. it's the reverb, and and that's very difficult to do unless you've got you know real measurements of real places. Now, just while you're doing that, it's just made me think: the, mm. do the, these have a recording feature as well? They do. Yeah. And when you record, does it record as audio? Does it? It can do. Yes. Yeah. There's so it will capture all of that nice ambience. Yes. Is what I'm thinking. Yes. So when you could, yes. so so if you've anyone, I mean, that Iron Audi is a very kind of modern, popular way of. Yeah. Of playing, yeah, um, and lots of people playing that style and like to record themselves playing that style, yeah. so that allows you to do it. Yeah. And record, does it record to USB? It does. Yeah. 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 Uh, on this one, I'll just show you for the because obviously yes. we're here with the with the camera. Uh, you've got the USB port right there, so it's very easy okay. to access all the time. And to record, I mean, I'll show you how it works because it's very simple to do. There's a button on here that says record, and then I just it's now saying record waiting. We've got a red flashing light to tell me I'm ready to go. So that's just yep. one button press, and I'm away. And then when I'm finished, we'll see I play the whole piece. You just press stop, and that will then write it straight to the USB stick, and it writes it as a WAV file. Right. So the great thing about WAV files is yes. anything will read them. If you're in your yeah. car, uh, if you've got a hi-fi system, a computer. Everything now these days, and it's wave, not MP3. It is right, wave, not right. MP3. which is good because MP3 is compressed. Yes, and you cuts all the top. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So, so this sounds as good as the best CDs, I suppose. Yeah, it's absolutely. Right, absolutely. Fantastic. And the whole simulator and everything is all on here, is it? On yeah, the, on the on the three hundred. Yeah. So you'll find fifteen different halls on both right. of them. Ah, yes. There we go. So what is it in the acoustic simulator? It's is actually it? under effect. Ah, yes. There it is. Hall simulator. Yeah. So yep. standard hall, opera hall. VNS Hall, oh wow, wow. So which one? French Cathedral, is that yeah. the? Wow. That's fantastic. Sounds really nice, doesn't it? So 
I, I assume, though, th there must be some other sounds. That are, there, are there organ sounds or anything in here? Which yeah, there are, actually. How would that sound in the... Uh, in the I'm, I'm intrigued. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, one of the things that, again, we've got in here are preset what we call scenes. Okay. And there's a scene in here that sort of relates to organ music. It's called Toccata and Fugue. Oh. So, you know, going back to right. the days of Bach and all that sort of thing. Uh, and if I press that, it's now chosen a pipe organ sound yep. and it's put it in the French cathedral. So I end up with. Wow. That sort of thing. So, uh, to Carter and Fugue, can I get that on here? Ah, uh, you can't actually. Oh. Uh, well, you can't actually get that setting because that's one of the great things on the 500 is right. that the scene memories um, recall lots of different things at once. So it, the scene memory set up my sound. Yeah. Now the GP300 does have that pipe organ sound, but with the 500, I was able to get to it straight away. Yes. I was able to get the right pipe organ sound, the yep. right hall simulator. Yes. It, it, it's also changed a couple of things to do with the balance of the sound and the tone of the sound, and also made this feel more like an organ to play. So change the actual touch sensitivity yeah, of the yeah. piano. Right, so okay. lots of different options there. Right. That if I had the 300, I could yes. get there, Yeah. but probably not as quick. Right, so, and can you store your own settings into this? Yes, right. you can. And that's another great thing about the scene memories on here is that I mean, I like to play all sorts of music. I, I you know, dabble with classical music. Yeah. I love to play jazz. Um, and for me, one of the nice things about this particular instrument is it has uh, a scene that's called jazz. And what it does is it will set up a piano sound in the right hand, but also yeah. I've got that sort of bass in the, in the, bass yeah, in the, in the yeah. lower. So, um, you know, my piano starts from there right to the top. I've now Obviously now I've got a little bit of bass to play there. Yeah. So I can do. That sort of thing if I want to. Right, okay. Now, what I might want to do is actually say, well, I, I quite like that, but I can then go into the settings for that and I can change the uh, lower sound, that, that bass sound that you heard. Yeah. I can make it actually, um, add a symbol to it as well. So now I've got that sort of thing. Yes. I can still do the same thing. Okay, so I've changed it a little bit. Now, if I had the 300, I could do exactly the same thing. Yeah. But when I switch the piano off, yep. I've lost it. Forgets it. I've then got to right. go back into okay. it every time. Um, with the 500, I can then save that and I could call it, I don't know, whatever, Chris's yes. Jazz, whatever it might be. Yeah. And one of the things that I'm finding at home, because I've got yes. the 300 at home, yeah. my wife plays, she loves yes. to play classical music. Yeah. She plays Chopin, she plays Debussy. Yes. And she's always going into things like the, um, uh, the tone control and the touch sensitivity control. Um, because apparently when Debussy was writing music, yeah. his piano felt a lot different to Beethoven's. Yes. Uh, and I suppose if you're a discerning piano player, you'd know that. Uh, and you can have different setups for different styles of music. Right, okay. So just to recap then, on the 300, I can make the changes to the piano sound and the, and the touch, but yep. I can't store those settings. That's absolutely right. But on the 500, if you set the piano up how you like it, and that includes touch and hall simulator, yep. um, brightness of the sound and all the other characteristics that you can change within the menu, yep. you can then store those and give them a name as well. Yes, right. absolutely. absolutely. Okay, so you could set up Tony's piano or Chris's yeah. piano. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. absolutely. So you can so customise it. And there are, are there some presets did you show me? Was, was that what you were using yeah. there? Yeah, well, um, what we were doing, um, the as well as things like the jazz scene memory, yes. um, we've got other things. Um, some settings will make a very, very big change to the sound. There's one here that's called easy listening. Yep. Um, and what that does is essentially, it gives me piano and strings straight away. Yeah. Nice, so that was just one 
literally one button one press, if you one like. One button, great and for ballads. If I wanted to do that on here, I have to press piano, yep. layer, yep. choose a string sound, yep. and then I get the... Yeah. That's right. But then the balance of the strings isn't quite right. That's right. So I need to That's change right. the volume of the strings on that, which yep. you, is already set on here, I yep. suppose. So it can be done, but it's... It's, it's a bit yeah. more it's a bit more complicated and and some of these scenes actually are designed for for the very discerning piano player and this is going back to what i was saying earlier about how you know acoustic pianos have changed over the years if yeah. you were going to talk to beethoven about his piano he'd say it was a totally different instrument really to chopin yes um and of course they wrote for the strengths of what they had so for example if i choose debussy yeah. and press enter it chooses the Bechstein, the Berlin grand sound. And um, if I just play a little bit. Now what's really interesting is that the piano is doing some very subtle things. So the tone changed, obviously. Yep. I've got a lot more string resonance in the sound and that's been put on automatically. Uh, it's put it in a fairly small sized hall okay. and I don't know whether you noticed but there's some really interesting nuances things like when I press the pedal I get a little sound of the dampers on the strings sort of, oh, okay. you know, sort of very yeah. delicate additions to the sound um, and it also feels different so the piano is is has altered the touch to make it feel a bit lighter um, if I go and play something else so if I go and play Chopin Again, I get a different sound. Yeah. Now that's the same piano um, setting. It's the same piano sound. Yeah, okay. But to me, as the player, it sounded a little bit different. Yeah. But also the way I play and the yes. actual feel, feedback I get through the keys alters because there's loads of different settings right. in there that the piano's um, changed. So this all comes back to the action, doesn't it? And how Casio have, or and Beckstein have tried to make the interaction between the player and the instrument yep. a lot more, uh, what's the word? Um, well, it's a lot more straightforward, I suppose you could say. I mean, the, the, the great thing about these pianos is, although particularly with the 500, you can go into lots of the different yep. settings if you want to, and you can tailor it to your exact requirements. With both of them, if you sit down and you play it for even five seconds, the first thing you notice is the fact that it feels absolutely amazing. I mean, you, yeah. you, obviously, on video, it's difficult to express, yes. isn't it? But to actually sit down and play the digital instrument with wooden keys, the same keys as on a Beckstein acoustic piano, to actually get that feedback. Yes. And also, something we haven't talked about, is the fact that actually when you look through the lid on these instruments, when yeah. you play a key, you actually see the hammers going up and down. And I must, oh, I, yes. you know, I remember when I was a kid and, and learned to play, the first yeah. thing I really fell in love with, when I could, you know, I was high enough to reach in and have a look in the grand piano at school, yeah. was all these hammers going up and down. And, uh, you know, to have that on a, a digital instrument, it sort of gives it a bit more of a connection. Do you know, I used to, when I was learning piano, I used to take the front off of my acoustic yeah. piano at home. And just my, watch it. Yes, yeah. that's it. And while I was playing, I'd be yeah. watching the, the keys go, yeah, the yeah. hammer's moving. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I've always felt that with an acoustic piano, that it, it it moves you in a in a way that a digital never has done yes. because the whole thing is vibrating and you're getting feedback through the key which yeah. it, and it, it, it plays with your senses whereas a digital piano in the past doesn't give you anything back. No. Uh, but, yeah, absolutely right. Absolutely uh, right. Th but these are starting to give that that kind of it's a two way relationship if yeah. you like with the piano, isn't it? Absolutely. I mean the one thing I'd say about both of these is that, that if they've got a special quality. As a pianist, first and foremost, um, uh, it makes me want to play. It, yes. Every time I see it, I come down in the morning, I see it in the living room, I want to play. Yeah. And, and that is, for me, the, the, the key thing um, that always has drawn me to certain instruments, you know, keyboards, yes. organs or pianos. If I want to play it, I know it's a good one. Yes, that's, that's very, very true. So, Chris, um, there was another feature that I've heard spoken about. Yes, there was. It's something called concert play. Right. Okay. I now, don't understand what it is at all. Right. So, so, you know when you buy a digital piano, a lot of the time uh, they'll include a book in the box, uh, mostly yes. solo piano music. 
most of it actually is quite difficult to play. Yes. You know, I, I mean, for me personally, to open you know pieces by Chopin and all that sort of stuff, very difficult to do. At Casio, what they wanted to do was actually say, well, how do we get people enjoying playing? How do you, yeah. you know, have something a bit different that's a bit special? So that's really what concert play is. So I've got somewhere here. This is the actual one of the books that you get when you buy both the, the, the 300 uh, or the 500. Okay. Yep. okay, this is called concert play. And inside there are um, a few piano pieces. What's lovely about this is, uh, well, there's two things, actually. The first thing is that they are nice arrangements to actually sit and play. Okay. You don't really have to work hard at them, but they're of the right level. They're not too easy, but you know, they're, they're fairly nice. This is a fairly sort of well-known piece of classical music. This is um, a little bit called, you know, Packerbell's Canon, which is a, yes. a very well-known piano um, piece of music. It goes like that. Okay, which is nice in yes. itself. But Concert play is actually all about orchestral recordings. Okay. There are, um, I think, ab ab about 15 or 25 pieces actually stored into these instruments. When I press the button that says concert play, yep. if I choose the piece I've just selected, so Canon, yep. right? So let's listen to this now. And that's a real orchestra, real orchestra, yeah. And there'll be a piano that comes in in a minute. Here we go. There we go. Okay. Yeah. So that's, I mean, it's a lovely recording, but I want to yes. get, obviously, play my part in that. So yeah. what I'm going to do is turn the piano part off, and I play it this time. So here's the same thing, but with me playing the piano part. say there's 15 20 of those built in yeah there it. are I think there's a f yeah 15 actually in okay this and and they're in here as well are they yeah they're right. the same recordings in both pianos um, okay. but actually we're going to go a step further with that because on the Cassia website now there are yeah. another 30 um, yeah. recordings which you download for free free of charge it's free of charge right so okay. you get the same quality of audio recording yeah and you get the same um, printed score, so you, you download a, a PDF file, yes. just print it off or put it yeah. on your iPad or whatever you like to do. Um, and it's something that's going on all the time. So at the moment there are 30, but we add to that library every month. Really. Right, okay. And uh, what do you download them onto, a USB stick? Or USB yeah. stick, good point, yes. You download them off your computer, can be a Mac or a PC, yeah. uh, straight to USB stick. Um, they go in a folder uh, on that stick called CP. Okay. Um, it's all you know in the, in the manual to show you how to do it. Just pop the stick in, and you'll see the extra songs appear on the window there. Right. So nice and simple. Yeah. Good. Absolutely. Good. Well, Chris, thank you very much for, for showing these to us. Um, they're wonderful instruments, aren't they? They've Fantastic. Been, obviously, been thought with the uh, with the player in mind. Yeah. Um, and you can come and see the, uh, the both the Casio hybrid pianos uh, at Bonner's Music in Eastbourne, and you can compare them with all the other big brands on the market as well. Because we understand that you know when you're buying a piano, it's not something you want to keep repeating every couple of years. You want to get it right the first time. So um, come down to Bonner's Music in Eastbourne, and you can compare. Uh, pianos of similar price points, uh, similar specifications, just to make sure you get the right piano for yourself. Um, and if you can't play, don't worry, we, uh, we can uh, help you, we can demonstrate the pianos to you. But if you can play equally, you're quite, we're more than happy for you to just sit and spend a whole day here if you want to and, uh, and enjoy yourself in piano heaven. <laughs> so uh, anyway, thanks very much, Chris, for, uh, for coming down. Um, and uh, if you would like any more information, uh, check the links in the description to this video um, or give us a call. Uh, we're quite happy to talk about pianos over the phone. Uh, we're open seven days a week as well, so uh, you can always pop down at the weekend. Uh, thanks very much, and uh, we'll see you in another video. Choosing the right digital piano is something that you only want to do once. And it's important that you have all the help you need to make the right decision. When visiting Bonner's Piano Showroom in Eastbourne, 
you will be welcomed and never rushed so that you can enjoy taking your time choosing the perfect instrument for you or your family. If you can't play the piano, no need to worry. Our staff are on hand to help you choose the right instrument for your needs. We have over 50 different digital pianos on display for you to compare, including the full ranges of Yamaha, Roland, Kawai, Korg and many more. Bonner's Music deliver pianos free throughout England and Wales. If you choose our fully assembled delivery service, our own staff will deliver, assemble and install your new piano in your home and leave it ready to play. We take away all the packaging and we'll even call you an hour before delivery so that you don't have to wait in all day. Need your new piano taken upstairs? No problem. We offer 0% finance on most pianos and if you already have a piano or keyboard that you'd like to upgrade, talk to us because we offer excellent part exchange deals. With an award-winning showroom, knowledgeable staff, free delivery and 0% finance, there really is no better place to purchase your new digital piano than Bonners, the digital piano specialists.